Okay, so welcome everyone. I'm Maisa Macedo and I'm here today with Sharka and Michal to present about Kubernetes controller and CRD patterns in Python. Today, uh, firstly, we will go over a bit of what's career and how career works and what are the advantage of using it. After that, Michal will go over the event-driven patterns in Kubernetes and also how that's done in with Python. After that, um, Sharka and I will go over CRDs and finalizers and why we decided to support that and the patterns that we use it. So Career is an OpenStack project that aims to provide um, networking for Kubernetes pods by relying on Neutron and also uh, to implement Kubernetes services by relying on Octavia. So career, career has two components. The first one is the career controller, which is, is the only component that has directly interaction with OpenStack. And it keeps watching um, events on the Kubernetes API and it, me, it triggers actions on the OpenStack API, either on Octavia or Neutron. And the data that generated from um, the OpenStack resources, it's then saved um, on OBJEC on Kubernetes objects. And also the second component that we have is the career CNI, which is responsible to provide the proper uh, binding, the port, proper port binding for the pods. So career can provide um, a really great gain when um, double encapsulation of packets is avoided. Um, so basically when containers workloads are running on top of uh, OpenStack VMs and uh, the benefits can be seen on the graph on the side. So uh, TCP stream uh, on pods of uh, running on different work nodes across different hypervisors when using ML2 OVN. You can see uh, that the blue one is the OpenShift SDN and the red one is the career. SDN, and there is a considerable difference um, on the throughput. And aside of those gains, uh, Korea is also um, a good choice because it, it combines everything under just one SDN. So it simplify, simplifies your networking stack because the operator would not need anymore to troubleshoot and debug um, uh, one orchestration system, not two orchestration systems, but just one now. But today we are not going to cover details about how Career CNI works. We are going to focus on watching on the Career Controller and watching the events and saving the data. And now I will hand it over to Michal. Right, so I will talk about uh, what is the controller pattern in Kubernetes and how we did implement that in Python in Courier. Um, so controllers are pretty much uh, like a control loop. So the, the distinguished fe distinguishing feature here is that uh, they are always watching the changes in resource status in the Kubernetes APIs. And then based on the status of the, all those resources and their own logic, they will, uh, they will interact with some external systems or they will try to change this, uh, the states of the resources in the, in the Kubernetes API to match whatever logic they have implement, implemented. So basically the, the goal is that a system state will, a system state will uh, correspond to the system specification, which is somewhere uh, embedded into the uh, Kubernetes API or in the controller's logic. So basically, if uh, if you consider what's uh, what's how Core Controller works, it's a, basically a set of controllers. So 
uh, for the, any pod, we need to create or delete the neutron pods. For the services, we need to create or delete Octavia load balancers. Endpoints are basically members of the Octavia load, bal load balancers. And network policy is uh, um, is a security group in the in the Kubernetes world. So basically, we create and delete neutron security groups based on the network policies. So pretty simple, right? Well, if if you would consider how to implement uh, that, uh, if if core controller would be written in Golang, then it's very simple. There's client Go, and client Go is managed by Kubernetes uh, uh, team. So it's simply uh, it's simply how you write that uh, in Golang, a standard. But in Python, there's nothing. At least there was nothing back in 2016 or 15 when core uh, was actually uh, being created. So this is what we end up with uh, written in Python. So I told you that, well, it's simple, right? Turns out it's not that simple. So let's let's take a look at each of those components and uh, and go through their functions. So Kubernetes client is simply a, a piece that, uh, that is contacting the Kubernetes API uh, directly. And it's with us since 2016. And back then, uh, the Python Kubernetes client that is maintained by the Kubernetes community wasn't supporting watching. So we need to implement that uh, on our own. So it basically uh, implements the watch API in our case. And watch API is simple streaming API that we get stream of events from the Kubernetes API. That's a simple JSON uh, stream of events. What's interesting is that it is retrying uh, the connections. So we. Normally, we contact Kubernetes API through the Octavia uh, load balancer. And uh, back in Queen's uh, version of the Octavia, uh, connections were dropped after 50 seconds on inactive, of inactivity. So we need to make sure that we retry. And we retry it with the, with the latest uh, resource version that we've seen. So each event has a resource version. And we can, uh, we can uh, save the latest uh, handled one and then try to, uh, to retry the connection specifying the resource version so that Kubernetes will know that uh, it needs to stream us the old, also the older events that we might have missed. An interesting part is that uh, we've noticed that sometimes we're losing uh, the connectivity silently so that Kubernetes uh, wasn't uh, really uh, noticing that. So we actually needed to uh, to implement dropping the connections after a time after a timeout of inactivity, uh, and well, that's basically what Octavia was doing, and seems like that was a feature, not a bug. Okay, so the next component that's Watcher. So Watcher is a container watching multiple URLs in the Kubernetes API, and it handles threading. So uh, each uh, each each endpoint, each URL is watched in a separate green thread, so that those won't uh, interfere. And it retries on a broader set of failures than just uh, uh, dropping the connection. And it does reconciling, which is not the correct term, I think. But basically, periodically, uh, Water is fetching full list of resources and putting that into the handlers uh, on the on the end of the pipeline, just to make sure that we are even if we'll lost uh, some events somehow, we will still try to figure out the correct state of the system. OK, controller pipeline is very simple. That's just a handler for dispatchers uh, and handlers. And its dispatcher is directing stuff into a correct handler, and handler is processing stuff. So that's easy. Log exception handler just logs and exceptions if they are coming uh, up the stack so much. And async handler is something where the magic happens. So it divides handling into green threads so that for each resource, so it's based on UID. So for each instance of a resource, we get a separate queue uh, processed in a separate green thread. Uh, green, in a separate green thread. So ba basically, this means that each uh, resource is uh, processed separately. And later on, you'll see that this is pretty useful with the retry handler below. So green threads are pretty self-explanatory. So now the retry handler. Uh, it is handling the predefined lists of exceptions and retrying the events uh, in the such cases. Uh, when, when those exceptions are catched by the retry handler. So we have the special resource not ready uh, exception that we use in many cases. For example, when Neutron is slow, for example, activating the port that we are waiting for, we are just uh, raising the exception so that 
we won't wait in the um, in the handler uh, itself, but on the retry handler. And it's with the exponential back off, it will retry the uh, the event until it's correctly processed. And it is blocking, but it's not a problem because uh, with the uh, with the async handler uh, dividing the each processing of each resource into a green thread, we are guaranteed that even if you block, we will just retry the the event and then proceed with the uh, with the queue of uh, of the next events uh, normally and in order. This is pretty important because we want that in order. For example, we don't want to process delete event and then after that delete event processing some some other events uh, that uh, we're considering that the resource is still uh, existing. Okay, the dispatcher is pretty simple, so it simply decides which method of the of which handler to call. So we have on present, on deleted, and on finalized. Uh, the first two are pretty self-explanatory. The third one will be explained by uh, Maisa a little uh, later on. And then the real work. So those are the handlers that are actually doing the uh, the hard work of creating the OpenStack resources uh, and so on. So this is basically how the how the pipeline looks like in the Cur uh, Cur controller. So I will now hand over to Sharka, and Sharka will explain you about uh, CRDs and how we use them to save data. So, if we want to talk about custom resource definitions, CRDs, we need to start with custom resources, which are extensions of the Kubernetes API. A resource is an endpoint in the Kubernetes API that stores a collection of API objects of a certain kind. Custom resources let you store and retrieve structured data. So the custom resource definition API resource allows you to define custom resources. When you create a new CRD, the Kubernetes API server creates a new RESTful resource part for each version you specify. So that means that defining a CRD object creates a new custom resource with a name and schema that you specify and the relation of the CRD and the CRD object is similar to class and cl to classes and class into instances in object oriented languages languages CRD is a template so after that you, you as a user can create a custom resources with this predefined structure in the CRD. So at the beginning of this presentation, we talk about what Curry Kubernetes are. Now we will talk about why we move to custom resource definition. And that's basically because we need to save data about OpenStack resources for example, uh, we need to know which Neutron port matches which Kubernetes port. Furthermore, we have to make sure the OpenStack resources are cleaned up when Kubernetes native resources are gone. So, what we have, we've been using before CRDs. We have been using annotation. That was because CRDs were not there and its predecessor third party resources were kind of limited. Annotations are key value string pairs and they're tied to the Kubernetes native resources. So now the question is why we abandon them? One of the most important reasons was improving readability and debugging. In the picture, you can see how annotations were looking. And as you can see, it is really difficult to find any information or to debug something. It's really hard to read. And now there is an example of the CRD for the same data. And 
I think you will agree with us that this is way better to read than annotations. Another reason is that with CRD data, it is not tied with a native Kubernetes resource anymore. That basically means if pod is gone, it doesn't mean that the Neutron port associated with it is gone as well. But on the other hand, the port will be gone when the, Kuber, when the courier port CRD is gone, is removed. Last but not least, uh, the CRDs are more Kubernetes-like pattern. Now, I will, uh, now we will move to Maisa, and she is going to tell you something more about patterns that we use with the CRD, which will help you to better understand why we move to them and how it let us split the work into smaller and specialized controllers. Okay, so a few patterns that we included in our custom resource de definition uh, were basically we needed to define the, the new API version that was created in order to um, handle the new CRD objects that we are creating. So one of the resources type that we added was the career load balancer, which is basically the it's pointed to a service and we also have the specification and the status field and those fields are make it make it easier for the controller to sync between the current state of the system and the desired state and also we have the finalizers on the metadata uh, so basically finalizers it's a list of strings that you define um, in order to avoid a hard deletion of this resource. Um, so basically, uh, in order to remove a CRD that was uh, defined, you would need to remove all the finalizers before that, otherwise it would be blocked. So how do we handle um, the addition of finalizers and the removal of finalizers in career. So um, when a deletion event of a resource that has finalizers defined that happens, the first thing that's included by Kubernetes is a deletion timestamp. Because, um, and when that um, deletion timestamp is included, it comes along as a modification event. So career keeps watching for those events, for any kind of event actually. And if the event, if the resource comes with no um, the deletion timestamp defined, it means that um, career will treat it as uh, an addition of that resource. So it, it will first add the finalizer to the resource in, here in this case we have the service as an example and after that the finalizer we also get added to the custom resource and lastly um, career will trigger the creation of all the load balancer um, resources that are needed to properly handle that event but if the event the resource that comes with the event has a deletion timestamp defined career will remove all the load balancer resource first. And after that, it will clean up um, the custom resource by removing the finalizer and allowing Kubernetes to delete that custom resource. And lastly, it will remove the finalizer from the service and the service can also get deleted. But it's important, aside from this um, sequence diagram, this scenario shown here, um, it's important to notice that whenever the career controller um, restarts, the whole list of resources existing on this, the cluster will um, be gathered again and watched by career. And this means that if the object comes with a deletion timestamp, um, the event will proceed with the regular deletion of all the resources that are handled by that object. So this means that um, the event will not get lost. 
if uh, the control array starts. And I guess that's all. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please let us know.